So this is just too funny. Do you remember a few weeks back, this is in mid-October, Elizabeth Warren decided that it was imperative that she release a DNA test to demonstrate in her Native American bona fides because many people had said, lady, you are whiter than the backside of this sheet of paper right here. I mean, you are as white as the driven snow. And Elizabeth Warren said, no, I have high cheekbones. I'm Native American. And then she went and she got like uh, a genetic test, a DNA test, and it turned out she was maybe one 1,024th Native American. And the media celebrated this. We read the headlines at the time. The media said, she has been vindicated. She's a Native American. How dare you question her ancestry? Well, the rest of us were like, uh, that's not what the test showed. And also, what? Well, now it turns out that we won the argument, right? Those of us who actually have any tenuous relationship with reality, we won this particular argument. Because now the New York Times is reporting that one-time Democratic 2020 presidential frontrunner, Senator Elizabeth Warren, has fallen on hard times politically. Why? Because of that DNA test. So Trump trolled her into taking a DNA test, and now she's got problems. Quote from the New York Times, nearly two months after Ms. Warren released the test results and drew hostile reactions from prominent tribal leaders, the lingering cloud over her likely presidential campaign has only darkened. Conservatives have continued to ridicule her. More worrisome to supporters of Ms. Warren's presidential ambitions, she has yet to allay criticism from grassroots progressive groups, liberal political operatives, and other potential 2020 allies who complain that she put too much emphasis on the controversial field of racial science and in doing so played into Mr. Trump's hands. So she tried to break into the intersectional group by releasing a DNA test. And everybody's like, no, lady, you're white. Not allowed. So it's, it's, it's really fun to watch all of these upper crust white candidates try to break into the intersectional battleground that the Democratic Party has become. On the one end, you have somebody like Kirsten Gillibrand, another rich white lady, who tweets out, our future is female intersectional, powered by our belief in one another. And we're just getting started. As my, uh, as my friend and, and business partner, Jeremy Boring, says, I'm not sure why she's allowed to assume the gender of the future. Uh, that's, that seems transphobic. But in any case, Warren went even further in an attempt to prove she could compete with all the other minority candidates. She didn't just pay tribute to intersectionality. She tried to become part of the intersectional coalition, and she looked really bad doing it. And now the New York Times is recognizing this. So how's the Democratic Party breaking down for 2020? Well, they've got the intersectional radicals. Then they've got the establishmentarians. And then they have the Bernie Sanders radicals. And this means that if you had to name the people who are the top candidates right now, it would be from the establishment, Joe Biden, from the intersectional side, Kamala Harris, and from the Sanders bro flavor of the month, that'd be Beto O'Rourke. So those would be your top three candidates if you had to handicap this race right now. All three of them are increasingly radical, and Elizabeth Warren was not radical enough. She tried to break from the Sanders bro area of the Democratic Party into the intersectional area of the party, and she failed dramatically because, as it turns out, there are serious gaps between these three sections of the party if you are a Democrat. And these gaps are only going to get larger as the Democratic Party becomes more and more radical on a wide variety of issues.